After the end of the holy month of Ramadan, shaitan begins to attack people. But what exactly is shaitan going to do to people at the end of Ramadan? It is known that when the blessed month of Ramadan comes, the shaitans are chained up as the messenger of Allah, blessings and peace be upon him, said in a reliable hadith. When Ramadan comes, the gates of heaven open, the gates of hell close, and the shaitans are chained up. This is what Ramadan is about. However, there are many places in the Holy Quran that talk about how shaitan is going to lead people astray from the straight path, which it is important to know about. For example, the Holy Quran says that your Lord said to the angels, I will create a man out of clay when I give him a commensurate appearance and breathe into him from my spirit, then prostrate before him. It is important to say that this was a bow of greeting, respect and expression of reverence in order to recognize the superiority of people over angels and not a bow of recognition by God or a bow for the purpose of worship. All the angels, without exception, prostrated themselves, except Jinn Iblis, who became proud and became one of the unbelievers. He Allah said, O Iblis, what prevented you from prostrating yourself in front of someone I created with my own hands? This verse says that Allah created man with his own hands. It is important to understand that this does not mean that Allah has physical hands like humans. Allah is unlike anything or anyone in this world. The word hands is used here so that we humans can better understand the meaning. This is a figurative expression that emphasizes that Allah himself directly created man. In reality, the Lord does not have a body, a place in time, or any human limitations. The Lord exists beyond our understanding, and we cannot fully comprehend his essence. The Lord exists beyond time and beyond space. Are you arrogant or are you one of the arrogant? Iblis said, I'm better than him. You created me from fire and you created him from clay. Allah said, go away and from now on you will be expelled and beaten and my curse will be upon you until the day of recompense. Iblis said, my God, grant me a reprieve until the day they are resurrected. Allah said, indeed, you are one of those who have been granted a reprieve until the day the deadline is set. Iblis said, by your might, I will seduce them all except your chosen or sincere slaves. Allah said, that's the truth. I'm only telling the truth. I will certainly fill hell with you and all who follow you. Shaitan, the devil, is always trying to lead a person astray from the straight path, confusing a person. Shaitan whispers doubts, inflates fears, and inspires false desires. Shaitan promises wealth and pleasure, but in return he demands to deviate from God's commandments, betray his principles, and plunge into sins. He paints pictures of a luxurious life full of entertainment and carefree, but is silent about the consequences, about the emptiness of the soul, about the loss of connection with the Almighty, and about the inevitable punishment on the Day of Judgment. Remember that shaitan's promises are traps, mirages in the desert. The true path is the path of righteousness that the Lord points out. The Lord gives us not only forgiveness and mercy, but also inner harmony, tranquility, and the meaning of life. Do not fall for the tricks of shaitan and strive for the satisfaction of the Lord. He is great and holy, and you will find real happiness both in this world and in the eternal. Shaitan masterfully plays on our weaknesses. He knows how to approach each person. He tempts one with power and wealth, another with fame and recognition, and the third with carnal pleasures. He throws up thoughts about the injustice of the world, that following religion is boring and restricts freedom. He whispers in my ear, just once, no one will know, you deserve more, then repent, and so on. The Quran says, you Iblis said, by your might, I will seduce them all except your chosen or sincere slaves. Allah Almighty says in the Quran, the devil threatens you with poverty and tells you to do abomination, stealing, harming people, cheating, and so on. Allah, God the Lord, promises you forgiveness from him and mercy. Allah, God the Lord, is all, encompassing, all-knowing. The devil scaring people with poverty inspires them to commit various atrocities and harm people. But remember, dear viewers, that harming people and committing atrocities is not the way out. All people should live in peace and friendship and help each other. This verse refers to the eternal struggle of man, the confrontation of good and evil, generosity and avarice, honesty and deception. The devil, personifying evil, tries to instill in a person the fear of poverty, pushing him on the path of sin. He whispers that all means are good for survival, that you need to cheat, steal, hurt others. But the Lord, in his infinite mercy, 
offers a different path, the path of faith and righteousness. He reminds us that earthly riches are transitory and the true reward awaits a person in eternity. The Lord promises forgiveness to those who stumbled, but sincerely repented, corrected what they had done, and returned to the straight path, and mercy to those who follow His commandments. After all, He is all-encompassing, knowing, seeing, and knowing every act and every thought of a person. This verse calls on the believer not to give in to fear and temptations, but to trust the Lord, who will provide him with everything necessary and show him the right way. He reminds us of the importance of honesty, generosity, and compassion, which are the foundation of a righteous life and bring a person closer to divine mercy. The Quran says, Allah, God the Lord, is the friend and guardian of those who believe in Him. He will lead them out of darkness to light. Also in the Holy Quran there is a prayer to the Almighty Lord. He is great and holy. Our Lord, give us good things in this world, health, food, useful knowledge, abundant property and financial condition, and the opportunity to do good deeds, to help people and so on, and good in the hereafter, paradise, and protect us from the torment of fire, hell. The Messenger of Allah, blessings and peace be upon him, said, You cannot harm yourself or others. The Messenger of Allah, blessings and peace be upon him, also said, It is unacceptable neither to cause harm without reason, nor to cause harm in response. These two hadiths represent one of the foundations of Islam, which concerns norms related to morality and human relationships between people of different cultures, peoples, and religions. This basis presupposes the deliverance of people from harm in its various forms and manifestations, which a person can bring through his words and deeds. Harm is prohibited, and the elimination of harm is mandatory, and harm is not eliminated through other harm, and harming each other is also prohibited. The Quran also says that Iblis said, I swear by what happened by your will, that based on my wrong action, I swear that for my loss of the right path, I will certainly sit down against them on your straight path, and then I will approach them from front and back, from right and left, and you will not find most of them grateful to the Lord. This verse describes the reaction of Iblis, the devil, to his expulsion from paradise for refusing to worship Adam. Pride and envy seized Iblis, and he vowed to lead as many people astray as possible, thus taking revenge on people. He declared war on humanity, promising to tempt and seduce people, pushing them to sin. He will use all the means available to him, lies, doubts, fears, desires, to lead a person astray from the path leading to the Lord. This verse serves as a reminder of the constant danger that Iblis poses. He emphasizes the importance of vigilance and mindfulness in spiritual life. A person should be ready to resist temptations, recognize lies and deception, and always remember the mercy of the Lord who is ready to forgive the penitent and help those who walk the path of righteousness. And remember, dear and beloved friends, what Allah Almighty says in the Holy Quran, truly the devil is your enemy, so treat him as an enemy. He is calling his party to become the inhabitants of the flame. We ask the Lord, great and holy, that he help all people and guide all people on the right path. We also ask for his help and protection. May the mercy of the Lord always be upon us and upon you, dear viewers. God bless you all.